Hello, my name is Sumi, and I am a youth services librarian with Spokane Public Library. Um, that means I get to do fun stuff with young people like you. Um, I am going to talk to you today a little bit about databases that the library has and how those can help you with your research assignments. Now, why would you want to use a database from the library when you can pop something into a search engine? Well, search engines don't always get you the best results. People can put whatever they want on the internet. People can edit Wikipedia articles to be whatever they want. So what you want to do is make sure that you are using credible sources. Typically something that's been published um, will hopefully have been vetted. And so you'll have some faith in the validity of what you're finding um, in your search results. Now, I'm not knocking Google and I'm not knocking Wikipedia. I use them all the time to get started uh, when I'm trying to find something out. But when I really need to get into it, I will go for something um, with a little more meat to it. And that is library databases. Now, how would you use library databases? With your library card. All Spokane Public School students have a Spokane Public Library card account. Now, you can activate that account or access it from spokanelibrary.org slash students. And if you are um, going to type that in at some point, you are going to see this. Now, this is our student resources page. You can click the login button here. You can also click the 6th to 12th grade students button to get to the stuff that we think would be particularly useful for your age range. The stuff that you're going to see here is stuff that you can use in your personal life. Uh, it might be stuff that you'd want to use um, just for fun or for school. Um, for instance, you could look at digital high school yearbooks. If you have family that went to high school here in Spokane, you might be able to find their embarrassing high school photos. Um, but that is not why we're here. We are actually going to look at the homework help databases underneath this digital resources heading. So I'm going to click on that and that will give me a list of databases that typically a lot of them will have magazine and encyclopedia articles. Um, this one has some primary sources. Um, this is tutorials for some college prep tests um, and some other things. We've got world news. You may notice as I'm doing this that several of these are from Gale. When you use them, they will look very similar to each other. Um, the ones that are not from the same company will have a lot of similarities, but they will look a little different. So you'll have to spend some time um, exploring to see what you can find. For today's demonstration, we're going to look at Explora magazines, which is full text magazines, journals, and other highly regarded sources from the world's leading publishers, which tells us that hopefully you can trust what information you find there. Now, when I click on this, if I'm not working from my work computer, I will be prompted for my library card number. So you want to have that handy. Since I am on my work computer, it's just going to pop right up and I'm going to see that I get a basic search bar right here. I have an option for an advanced search and there's all these browsing options down here as well. Before I forget, I want to point out that there is a help button up here. Some of the databases have excellent help sections and so you can use those to get some ideas about how to tweak your searches. I thought about looking at COVID-19 just because you know it's kind of a big deal but I thought I'll look at something else that's a big deal which is Black Lives Matter. As I'm typing this in I see that I get these suggestions um, and it's interesting because it's been different each time I've done it so um, this is a, what if I want to know about the movement specifically uh, one time I typed this in and it came up with Black Lives Matter social media. Um, and so I'm not sure why that happened differently this time. If it was because I scrolled over here. But at any rate, what I'm interested in looking at is the basic topic. So I'm going to search for that. And it's going to take me to a page that has some results. Now, a brief overview of what we're going to see here. There's a topic overview. This is from the Salem Press Encyclopedia. Um, and it tells me that I might also be interested in the overview on the topic of police brutality. 
um, if I want to see the results that I got. And I had 3,000, so that's a lot. I can scroll down a little bit and see there's some videos, there's some articles. Looking at this icon, I can see that this is a periodical. This particular one is from something called America. It's from September 2020. And I can see the subject headings down here, which um, this tells me this has something to do with the Catholic Church. I wouldn't know that from looking at the title of either the article or the magazine, because it's not one that I'm familiar with. Maybe it's a newspaper. I don't know. But um, so the choices that I have here are to look at the full text in HTML or the PDF. If I choose to look at the PDF, I'm going to get all of the photographs and the charts, any of those things that I might have wanted to look at. That's particularly useful when you're looking at science documents and you need to see the graphs. If I were to say go to um, this HTML full text for this article from Rolling Stone in July, I will click on that and I will see what I get. Now our subject headings show here they're not clickable, which I think is kind of unfortunate, but you can get to clickable subject headings by clicking on detailed record here. Rather than trying to type the subject heading in exactly right, you can go to the detailed record and click on, say, Trayvon Martin, and you'll get all the articles that come up with his name attached in the subject heading. Now, um, I scrolling down, I can see that I can listen to the article in an American, Australian, or British accent. If I would like to have, listen to it as I read, I can do that. Um, it highlights all my search terms in there for me. Um, if there were photographs, those are not in here. And I think that's probably because this is a popular magazine from just a couple months ago. So um, you can get the text, but you're not gonna see anything else. And there are nine color photographs according to this, but we don't get to see those um, in this database. Now on the right here, you can see that there are tools you can use. You can save the article, you can email it, you can print it. These are another set of things that you're going to find in just about any database that you look at. One of my favorite things is the cite tool. So the cite tool will create a citation in the proper format for you. So I click this and if I need to use the APA uh, format, for my citations, this tells me what I'm going to need to put in there. Some citation formats require that you include the link that you um, accessed it through, and some will require that you include the date that you accessed it. So these will put those all in there for you. I do see a little bit of a suggestion that you um, double check, make sure that your format really matches up with um, the official format in whatever booklet or website that you were using. This um, tool can make mistakes after all. So I'm going to go back to my result list. And doing this, say I don't really want periodicals like Rolling Stone. If I want academic journals, I can click on academic journals and encyclopedias. Maybe I'm going to do that. I will try academic journals first. And what that's going to do, it's going to weed out any of the videos. It's going to take out any of the Rolling Stone stuff. And it's going to give me things like conflict resolution quarterly or the Braille monitor or the labor studies journal from 2016. So this is one of those things, if I'm only interested in the recent Black Lives Matter movement and the way it's been going recently, I can change this publication date um, scrolly bar to include maybe just the last two years. And then that should cut out maybe say this stuff from 2016 because the movement's been around for a while. But if I'm interested in what's going on now that might not help me unless I'm interested in looking at sort of a historical view. So those are some of the things that you can do here. I am trying to look and see if I missed anything. Um, I don't think so. So I'm coming back to you. I hope that this was some help to you. I know it's kind of a lot to squeeze in. Um, you can access a whole bunch of stuff with your library card and it can be kind of overwhelming. Please feel free to ask 
I'm going to volunteer your teachers, ask your teachers for help. I get in touch with us librarians. This is what we do, and we'd be happy to help you use this stuff. Get in there, check these out, see what you think, and um, see if there's any questions that come up. Um, and we will uh, see if we can figure it out. Thank you very much again, and have a great day, night, whatever you're in.